For those who don't know, I've been eating Chick-fil-A sandwiches before big Yukon games, and they're undefeated when I've done so. I want to keep this good mojo going, so I'm partnering up with Chick-fil-A and Glastonbury for this season. If you're in the area, head over to Chick-fil-A Glastonbury on Wednesday before the game against DePaul, order my lucky original sandwich, and say code CT scoreboard at checkout, and they'll give you a free large side of waffle fries. It's that easy. Head to the podcast social pages for more giveaways and promos we'll be doing with Chick-fil-A Glastonbury throughout the season. And now to my episode with Alex Caravan. Okay, been a little bit since we had Alex uh, on the podcast, so happy to have him back. I, I, I know it's been a, been a lot. You've been through a lot since we last spoke, so uh, I, we'll, we'll just start now. How you doing tonight? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. Um, glad to uh, see you back out there uh, on the court. I know we had a, a little bit of a scare. I mean, we, we talked right before the Providence game, I think was our, our last episode. So, I mean, we, we look back uh, at, at that game, obviously, uh, a bit of a scary situation there for you. Uh, I, I'm curious, to, I, not to make you relive the whole thing, but um, but what what's going through your head in a, in a moment like that uh, when you're there Ankle probably hurting you a bunch. Uh, what was that whole whole game like? I was just mad. I think when the ankle injury, I was mad. That's what that's my initial thought was. Just from I had ankle injuries in the past, and they're just like annoying to deal with. So I was just mad that it happened, and you know it wasn't anybody's fault. It just happened. And then um, back in the locker room, talking with James, trying to move it hurts a lot when I'm running. All this stuff, and James trying to tape it up, but. Told him, um, trying to finish the game just from, you know, we're playing Providence. It's an electric environment. They're a really good team. And, that, you know, I don't want that to stop me from playing. I told James, I got two off days in between. I'm good. Just let me finish the rest of this game. I got two off days. I don't care about it. We'll see how it goes after. And that um, I just – all my mind was on was finishing the game. And then James wasn't done talking. I just left the training room, started running, and then it got on the court, and then the strength coach started following me. But – um. <laughs> It was a lot of emotion that game. And then just more important, I was just happy that we won. So yeah, winning a Big East game against a really good Big East team, it's always nice. I, I've got to ask, I mean, you come out from the locker room, you get to the scorer's table. It's it's, it's quite the ovation for you. What, what What's it like? You know, you got the whole crowd behind you at that point. It meant, it meant a lot to me. I think, you know, just seeing that sense of appreciation that UConn fans have for me, just, you know, the cheering, that's always something – you know, it's special. It's always nice for players. And, you know, it started when I ran back onto the court at the tunnel and, you know, the fans near the tunnel saw me and then everything erupted. So, um, you know, it, was, it, it definitely meant a lot to me and just to, you know, feel appreciated by the UConn fans. So you, you get back out there, like in terms of percentage, how are you feeling out there going through it? Because, you know, I see them like, geez, like the fact he's out there gutting it through this rest of this game. Where are you like on a, on a scale there? What of being out there? I'd say I was at forty to fifty percent, but then when I got on the court and the adrenaline started hitting, I'd say like seventy, seventy-five, okay. maybe. So the adrenaline, like I could barely run when I was in the training room doing all that stuff, defensive slides, couldn't do any of that. And then um, I get out there on the court and I'm running, you know. I felt good. So um, I'd say 70, 75 with the adrenaline. So when you're out there, the ankle's not feeling the best. What's the biggest part of your game that, that's impacted while you're out there kind of feeling beat up? <laughs> Any movement and jump. I think the rebounding was the biggest thing for me, just from the jumping standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. Just always trying to keep it moving on the sidelines. I didn't really sit down during any of the huddles. So just jumping around all the time and any like free throws, just continue to make a move. And then, um, I was really rebounding, just rather than finishing, I'd say, just not really wanting to get to the basket to jump, really just jumping, jumping, finishing, and um, rebounding. But defensively, it felt better than I thought it would. So the game game's over. You guys win that one. The adrenaline starts to to wear off. How tough are the next couple of days for you there? Yeah, that's tough. I wasn't – yeah, I didn't practice at all those two days. So um, it was tough just knowing, like – the reality of it was we had a really good idea to where we didn't want to force the ankle injuries. We didn't want the pain to linger on for the rest of the season. And yeah. it hurt that I wasn't going to be able to play Saturday against St. John's MSG environment was wild and um, really just missing a game. It sucks. And just knowing that you have no control on um, 
you know, really no control into, you know, scoring or helping the team out. So really just shifts to being a better leader. But um, I tried. We warmed up. Was trying to get it going. Warmed up. Got a couple shots up that we just knew. Coaches knew. Myself, James, we knew it was just smarter to, you know, yeah, this affect the rest of the season. Yeah, as, as you're going through shoot rounds, it's just something where it's like, hey, like still just doesn't feel right as you're going through it, as you're thinking about whether or not you're playing. Yeah, I didn't feel right. There was there was a lot of things like lateral movement that we were working on, jumping still, and um, really, I if I wasn't running the day before we played Saturday, so I wasn't running at all Friday or really doing anything basketball wise. So we just thought it would be smart just to rush into it. So I I, I see you at that game. Like I I see the starters are announced. You're you're lingering around the huddle. How tough is it for you to to have to sit out that one and, and be on the bench that whole game? It hurt. It hurt a lot. But um, I think I tried to, you know, try to, like, you know, take all that hurt in. Like, during, like, when they were warming up, I was hiding the locker room from media and stuff until they announced. And then um, just really real, just reflecting, you know, how can I help the team win if I'm not playing? And that's, you know, using my voice, talking to the, you know, people playing and um, talking to my teammates and just, you know, letting them know what I see. And they they did everything perfectly. They played an amazing game. So happy that we won. And um, yeah, I mean, if I wasn't able to play and we won, then shoot, we won. I don't care. So um, it was awesome. It was it was awesome at the end. So I, I not being in the game and not having to you know really focus on on exactly what's going you know on play by play. You're able to sit and maybe soak in the environment a little bit. You able to like soak in a bit of that UConn heavy crowd at MSG there that day. Oh, definitely. I think. When I'm warming up, I don't look at the crowd really, but like that day when I was just standing there during the warm ups, yeah, you take a couple looks around. You saw you saw the Yukon fans. There were there was a good section, and then there was one up there was a bunch of Yukon fans at the top two, and then then you see a lot of red for mm -hmm. St. John's. So um it was really a well mixed environment and um you could definitely when the Yukon chant comes out during the national anthem, that's special. I'd say that. <laughs> Uh, so you, you go from that, you know, you win the Providence game, win, win that St. John's game, then you, you go to Butler, who's been a surprise team in the Big East this year, who's been a, a, a really tough opponent. They've gone in and beaten some of those other top Big East teams on the road. And you guys kind of get in a game with them. It's just kind of a grinded out, back and forth type game. What, what's that game like for you? You're you're returning, you know, your first game back from, from the injury, and, and you've got a tough one in Butler. Yeah, we knew the. Butler, it's it's a team that you really don't want to see often, just from the way they play and just how good they are. I mean, they have so many different weapons and their style is unique. They got basically four guards out there with a the big, so um, super tough team to play against. Completely different from last year's Butler team, and yeah, it wasn't the prettiest game, but we knew that it wasn't the prettiest game. But a grinded out game against Butler was something that we knew that they didn't want to play. So. Really, the defense, the team, the defensive effort that we gave definitely helped us win that game. And then offensively, we knew it was sloppy in general. We knew that as long as we were locked in on defense, it'd be good. Yeah, you look at at that St. John's game. Uh, you know, Providence Butler, Steph really starting to break out. What are, what are you seeing from him over these couple games? It seems like he's kind of put it all together. His confidence level is just shot through the roof right now. I mean. He has an all-time high confidence. You see it, just how confident he is attacking the basket, finishing, trying to dunk on people like he did on Georgetown. And then um, his shot, his shot's really, like, it's looking good right now. So yeah. um, I think that's just all a confidence thing for him, just knowing that if he's open shooting, that we, myself, the te my teammates, the coaches, everyone in general has confidence in him to shoot it and just let it fly if you're open. So um, you really see, I think it's really just a confidence thing with him and, defensively i think he gets a lot of energy from his defense too i mean he's guarding the best players on the other team and um doing an unbelievable job with them as a freshman especially so you you go from that butler game head down to dc to play georgetown uh your your second game back there and if there's any question of, of how healthy you're feeling i think you put that aside in the first couple of minutes of that game i mean you come out you know just on fire uh offensively what's that feeling like for you starting off that game and just kind of knocking everything down it felt good it felt real good I think getting in those zones it felt good but really it's just Donovan made great passes to me it's someone that his size 
Tristan and Cam, they were really distributing the ball to whoever was open. It just happened that I was open that game. So really just taking advantage of the opportunities. Having healthy ankles helps. I think that was the best I've felt going into the game. And, um, yeah, the coaches, they did a great game plan too with, you know, just realizing that they switched a lot. So just trying to find cuts and they want to take the three-point line away. So really just, you know, drawing two and kicking out to open players. And, I mean, really – I didn't do much. I just cut and then my teammates found me. So it was really just <laughs> credit to my teammates. You you talk about Donovan there. I mean, I think what we've seen of him since he's come back from injury, I mean, he puts up 18 and 14 against Butler, but then I think probably one of the more impressive stats is in that Georgetown game. I think he's ended up with six assists. What's it like playing with a guy who, you know, for, for a big guy who, who could pass it at, at such a high level like he can? It's special. I mean, I've never – played with a big that passes like him and it makes the game so much easier just from if you're open he's gonna find you and um he's so unselfish too that he's really looking always to pass and um it's amazing playing with him just from someone being seven two he sees over everybody sees everything makes the correct passes puts them on target and they're never bad passes either it's always on target so um He's he's a, he's a special player, and you know they talk about alien like with like Wemby, the plays that he makes, and Chet. You gotta look at that play when he passed it between um, Supreme Cook's legs. That's all he talked about too. After he loved he loved that pass right between his legs. Oh, I know. I mean, you, you you could put a whole highlight reel together just from from this Georgetown game from from all of, you know that he was able to do out there in that game. You, you guys get up big. Um, you know, I think it's twenty five at half. Um, and there was that viral clip of uh, Coach Hurley that went around there uh, of keeping your foot on the gas. What's what's it like from you know a player's mentality? You're up 25. How are you keeping your foot on the gas, knowing that you've got a pretty significant lead at that point? Just knowing that um, every team in the Big East is good and that they can come back whenever. They had a lot of talented players and that uh, you know they shot a lot of threes. So if they start making threes, then that lead slowly goes down and. Um, you know, coach, coach always emphasizes playing to the UConn standard, UConn identity, that we got to get better every game. We got to, you know, continuously get better at what we do. And uh, it doesn't stop just because we're up 25 because, you know, if we have those leads, we can't continue to play slow and, you know, blow the leads. I mean, we saw with last year's team, like, I don't know, a game against Arkansas, we're up, but we're still continuing to push and, you know, put put our foot on the gas. And um, that's something that he wants for us, no matter who we're playing. Yeah, no, clearly, uh, clearly at some points there, despite the big lead, uh, had a, had something to say to you guys. Um, what, what's the what's the halftime message like in a game when, you, when you're up by a big margin? I, I mean, we've talked in the past what it's like during close games, but the game you're up like that, what's kind of the message at half? Continue to do what we're doing. The scouting was good. Everything that the coaches talked about, it was, you know, it was executed perfectly and uh, continue to play unselfishly and then, most importantly, we always say that the score is zero zero. Go out there, it's a new half, zero zero, and just try to get another big lead. Yeah, at, at this point in the big C, big East season, with the exception of Marquette, who's coming up this weekend, you're you're playing teams for the second time. So how different is it in these second matchups against these teams? It's so different. It makes it much harder to win, I believe, just from knowing they have film on you from when you've played them. They know what to do. They'll make the adjustments that they want to make, whether that was at halftime of the first game or what they see from the film. And um, it makes it a lot tougher. And both sides, both teams are doing adjustments. And you already played against the players. You know what they like to do. And it's not like you played them like two months ago. You played them like two weeks ago. So um, yeah. that's just what's unique about the Big East is that, I mean, coming up with Marquette, we're playing them Saturday, and then we'll play them again in like two weeks. And then, possibly a week later again so yeah. uh big east tournament so you know it just makes it extremely difficult to win yeah um you get next game up is uh depaul on wednesday little valentine's uh day uh extravaganza <laughs> out in uh chicago how you guys feeling heading into this game against paul we're excited it's just another day to another game to get momentum going for us continue this streak and um more importantly get better play to the yukon standard Gain momentum for our upcoming Big East games, as we know we got we got a lot of tough games coming up, and um, but really just focus on the moment and you know get a Big East win. I mean, they all count as one. It helps us get closer to the regular season championship, and that's just what's most important.
Yeah, it, it, at this point, I mean, maybe two thirds of the way through the season, maybe a little over half. Um, as you're talking about playing to that UConn standard, what what are the things that, at, at this point in the season that as a team you're focused on trying to get better at uh, as you head towards you know the home stretch here uh, and head into March? So defense and rebounding. I think our defense it, it falls off sometimes during games and some moments, especially during like the media timeout runs or whatever, those little four-minute segments um, could fall off here and there. Then rebounding, I think. Some games we've looked really well rebounding. In other games, before Donovan was – when Donovan was hurt, we got killed on the glass some games. And then something like against Georgetown, I think we were even. So um, yeah. I think just really the defense and the rebounding is just we got to tighten that up. Not, not to get you looking too far ahead, but uh... – Obviously, a big matchup based on, uh, especially based on the rankings that came out today, with with two top five teams in, in, in you and Marquette on Saturday. Um, clearly, top level Big East, you know, matchup there. How, how, how do you feel about a, a game like that? Because it's probably one of the bigger games you, you've had during the regular season here in your time at UConn. Yeah, super excited for it. I think when you play another top five team, it's you know it brings another level of energy and another level of excitement, and I'll. Yeah, it probably is one of the biggest regular season games I've played in. And, um, you know, it's a really good team. We know what they're capable of. They they beat us in the Big East tournament last year. And, um, yeah, I mean, they've got pretty much everybody back from that team except for one starter. So, um, yeah, we know it's going to be a tough game. I mean, they've been winning six, seven games in a row right now. So, um, you know, it's going to be a tough one. They're, they're, a really, they're a damn good team. I don't really – know what else to say right now just from we still got another game before we play them yeah. so still got to lock in on the scouting report when we get to thursday so right after right after the depaul game we'll probably start scouting so um but i know our coaches will do a great job you know for getting us prepared because it is you know every big east game is important and that one's definitely important with i think right now we're one and two with them so yeah we'll be yeah i i know the team uh carries around the uh, Big East tournament trophy on the uh, on the big posters there. What would it mean? I mean, as we're heading down towards the the home stretch, really, uh, of conference play, what would it mean to you to be able to take home a Big East regular season uh, championship there? Everything. I mean, everything now. It's just winning another trophy. But the coaches, they harp on it, just how special it is just to win a championship that 10 other teams are battling with us for throughout, what is it, like – three months maybe yeah. three uh, four months so it's really a three month four month championship that we're all battling for that started in december till march so um yeah it just shows you know how consistent the team is and just how you know tough the team is to be because you play everybody twice so it means a lot um so i gotta throw this at you because i saw it on social today i want to make sure i get the stat right you guys are the only team in the nation with five players averaging 10 plus points and four plus rebounds what, what do you think that that says about this team? Because I, I feel like, you know, within the team, maybe you don't necessarily like get a chance to be like, wow, like the, what we're doing is something really special. And, and from the outside, maybe we're able to appreciate it a little bit more. But when you hear about something like that, what does that make you think about this team? I don't even know that. That's cool. That's really cool. I think it just shows how, yeah, it's definitely special. I think, um, yeah, just how much we care, you know, selfishly, just how much we don't care about ourselves. And, you know, yeah. we're not we're never trying to get ours. We're just playing the game how it is. And just having so many talented players out there to where they average double digits, it's it's super scary for opposing teams to play against and says a lot about our team or a lot about the culture that the coaches built at UConn to where it's whoever's night, go ahead, go get it. So yeah. um and the, our team, and, um, you know, we follow through with that. All right. I got some fun ones that came in through social as always. So we'll, 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 uh, we'll lighten <laughs> things up a, a little bit here. Uh, so I guess in a, in a social media video, when everyone talked about what they bring on the bus with them, you mentioned a lacrosse ball. What do you, what do you do with the lacrosse ball? <laughs> it's the best thing to roll out your feet. And I do it a minute each when I brush my teeth. I do the top row when I brush my teeth. I got a little timer thing on my toothbrush. I do 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Minute goes off. I switch feet with the lacrosse ball. After you you roll out your feet with the lacrosse ball, it feels amazing. It's like a little foot massage. Your feet feel looser. Everything is better. It's, It's helped me. 
I like the lacrosse ball for my feet. <laughs> All right. All right. Not that I'm super active on my feet, but I'm, I'm going to have to try that, uh, see, see how it does. I'm going to take a quick break from the interview to tell you about my friends at Martin Rosol's Meats. This fourth generation Connecticut family business produces kielbasa, hot dogs, sausages, and deli meats using Martin Rosol's very own original recipes. Their products can be found in grocery stores, delis, restaurants, and hot dog stands throughout the state. And if you're looking for your fill right away, check out their retail store in New Britain. For more information, visit martinrosolsinc.com and go support a Yukon fan-owned business. And now, back to the interview. As you head on a uh, road trip this week uh, to DePaul, uh, who's your who's your road trip roommate usually? My road, that's Cam. Okay, okay. All right, so you got the shooters together there. Yeah, it's it's nice having Cam. We'll have he loves basketball too, clearly, as you could see. And um he has the we have the games on and the TV, and then when it reaches like ten o'clock, we just know like not to talk to each other. So he'll put his <laughs> headphones in, watch like some movie, he'll laugh about it, and then I I don't wear headphones when I'm in bed, so I just play my video as loud as possible, and then he'll yell at me just get mad at me and then um yeah when it's when it's 10 30 i knock out and then he'll go to bed at like 10 45 11 he says so all right we're we're very, very good roommates all right very there good. you go all right that's that's a fun fact there um let's see all right well we'll make this the martin rosal's question uh of the episode here uh super bowl was was last night what's your go-to super bowl uh snack or food food item I usually buffalo chicken dip. It's always fire on Super Bowl. But last night I had um hibachi. I went and got hibachi. Oh. Hibachi was amazing with some sushi. It was good. Usually buffalo chicken dip or sushi. Two very different things, but right. both fire. I, I was going to say, sushi doesn't strike me as like the typical Super Bowl snack food. But uh, oh. hey, whatever works. I love sushi. I, I get, yeah. Sushi's fire. In my family, we usually do that. We'll order a lot of sushi for Super Bowls for some reason. So I've kept with that this year. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, the sushi and hibachi kind of rolls right into this one. Uh, because I know this guy loved hibachi. And it's uh, it's his birthday today. Dama Sonogo, your, your former teammate. Got to hear it. It's his birthday. You got to tell me your favorite Sonogo story from your time of uh, being with Adama. Um, <laughs> There's a lot. Um. We were cold tub, hot tub buddies. So we get in the cold tub at the same time, hot tub, we get it out at the same time. So um whenever we were like rushed for a road trip, like he made sure he got his recovery time, man. And if like if you're kicking him out early or you're kicking him out too late, he's not messing with that. So if the bus is leaving later because he's got to do his cold tub, hot tub, it's leaving later. So now I have to carry that responsibility for the team this year. And then – um just how he just how like he gives like he just yells at the freshman a lot just come on you're a freshman come on you're a freshman so um no he's he's awesome and um i miss the guy a lot so i'm glad it's his birthday hopefully he does something fun gets a nice little win he's been doing good so far yeah he's been killing it for the uh for the windy city bulls there um i uh you mentioned the freshman you keep leading me into these questions so nicely done <laughs> um, a guy we've seen really kind of get a lot more playing time over the past, you know, few weeks here has, has been Jalen Stewart. Um, and it seems like you, you talk about Steph and his confidence growing. It seems like Jalen's another guy who's just getting more and more confident by the game. What, what are you seeing him out of him uh, on the court during these games? Yeah. <laughs> that little celebration. Um, <laughs> that's how you know you're getting confident, right? Like you're celebrating now on the court. Like that. That's, yeah, that's, that's how you know you're confident. You're doing this thing on the court. <laughs> um, too small. Um, no, he's been amazing. I mean, you see how much more comfortable he is out there. That's definitely the confidence piece of it. And just how he's understanding the game so much more. He's, you know, in practice, he's locked in. And like he I remember a couple of practices ago, he made a mistake on a defensive play and he's got he's gotten it right like ninety nine percent of the time. But, you know, he threw the ball into the chair and uh just got mad from it. So, you know, he's really starting to understand everything. And I think that's just so important for him. He's, once he starts understanding everything, just understanding the details of the game. When he gets out there on the court, he's gonna flourish. He's gonna flourish. So, um, yeah, I mean, you see it just how much we need him this year. So, having having him get minutes and having him, you know, get his confidence and what he's knowing what to do out there, I think he's he's gonna be a special player. And I know 
his time's going to come and he's going to be a star here. Uh, as you mentioned, just in terms of like confidence and getting a better understanding out there from just like that common person watching the team, it, it seems like the playbook you guys have is, is just very intense. <laughs> there, there's a lot to it. How tough is it to really get a full understanding of this playbook, what you guys are trying to run and, and really feel comfortable in it? Because it seems like it's no small uh, task there. No, it's not at all. We still, we're, we go through, you know, dummy offense and we still mess it up here and there in practices. So, um, you know, it, every day somebody's learning, you know, the plays, just continue to learn them. And um, yeah, it's it's definitely complicated, but that's just what makes our offense so elite. And that's why you have guys go off different games every time just from, you know, they'll take away two players, but then we got you know, a whole separate sheet on the playbook for, you know, two other players or three other players. So um, it's definitely complex, but once you understand it, it's, it's like you'll get whatever you want. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else do I have here for you? Oh, this, this is another one, apparently, uh, from social. Uh, Hassan has mentioned how good of a bowler he is. Have you gone bowling with Hassan? We have gone bowling with Hassan. Is, is he as good as he says he is? Um, I don't remember him being a standout player when we went team bowling. I don't know why he said he wanted to be a bowling coach. I've never heard Hassan wanting to bowl or doing anything bowling wise in the future. Very confusing answer right there. I'd say I don't... He's, he's messing with us a little bit. He's messing with you guys, but Shoot, who knows? Maybe I just don't know if he really – maybe I just don't know enough about Hassan to where he loves bowling. So maybe if you can't fancy him bowling, then maybe blame me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so Coach Charlie mentioned about, you know, how you guys went out there, how you guys defeated January this late this year after last year's January was, was a tough one. How, how different does it feel at, at this point in the season this year compared to, you know, where you were last year kind of – you know, going through that little bit of a swoon in January. Feels amazing. <laughs> January, we're not allowed to swear, but F January last year, that killed us. I mean, I think we went three and five in January. Like, January last year, it was awful, but I think it helped us, you know, helped yeah. one of the natty from coming together. But this year's January felt amazing, getting revenge. And that's just what makes Coach unique. Just he always finds something that, motivates him and like gets him angry and the whole month of january he just thought about last year so that's why no matter who we played he was angry from it and um he's gonna find something for february i know he will if not if it's not related to february he's gonna find something to get him you know motivated and get us going so um yeah screw january and glad we went undefeated yeah. no um no it's a much much better january i mean a lot more cheerful on this podcast they will have a little bit more fun right? <laughs> i mean uh i feel like last year is trying to uh peel the fans to hang in there and, and stand strong and uh hopefully uh everyone listened to that advice and uh has been enjoying the run since mm -hmm. no definitely definitely yeah we were definitely begging fans last year <laughs> and it got ugly at one point yeah but here we are now, uh, what is it, tw 12 in a row now, and uh, hopefully a lot more on the horizon uh, as the uh, as the season goes on. So, Alex, I, uh, I really appreciate you coming on. I know it's a, a busy stretch for you. The schedule's getting tougher and uh, more intense as the Big E season comes to an end, so thanks so much. I got one other thing. I don't know who this dude on Twitter is, but uh, my parents love you, and me and James get a crack out of it in the mornings, but... um. This dude's making pictures and putting my face on them and like oh. making nicknames and stuff. <laughs> Please continue with that. My parents send me that, send me all of them. And then, um, do you, James, have, a do you have a favorite? I like the, um, uh, me and James, the athletic trainer here. We want, we look at them every morning. We found the uh, Kara man and, um, Kara spam to be the funniest, but I okay. like man. I got, hold on. I, I, I got my, uh, I got my choice <laughs> here. I got to get, cause we got to give this guy some credit. Um, Hold on, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna find it because he did tweet me yesterday asking if you see, if you see. I see them every time I do rehab. James and I will look through them, and then we'll see if there's any new ones. And then my 
Harris will send them to me. This is Mr. Yukon on Twitter at, at 1999 Huskies. Uh, yep. <laughs> he's got the one of you in the uh, in the Superman suit that he said is his favorite of the ones. Yeah. So uh, that one. Yeah, there we go. Oh. So he'll be happy to get the shout out. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you for giving him his due. I didn't even have to bring it up. And uh, I'm glad you did because I had completely forgotten to bring it up. So thank you. Job well done. Thank there. You. He deserved a shout out for the time he spends on making those pictures so, someone someone also tweeted in that apparently the uh the announcers and broadcasters in these games are starting to use some of the nicknames so we, we oh, really? i was really catching up damn shout out to um shoot i forget her name but she was yeah, on mary this... mary mary yeah Mary. shout out mary look at this look at this we got <laughs> shout. we're gonna have to add a shout out segment on these going forward uh let's, depending on whatever you want to send your way Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Well, Alex, thanks again. Uh, enjoy the trip to Chicago. Uh, lay off the deep dish pizza. You got the real pizza here in Connecticut. You don't need. You don't need any of that. So uh, people, people were mad at that too. You, well, yeah. What you you like Massachusetts pizza? Is that it? No, I I don't like Massachusetts pizza. But I'm not gonna. I'm always gonna say Massachusetts is the best in everything. So I got to say Massachusetts. <laughs> All right. We can cut you some slack there. Get some peppy sent up your way and uh, call it a day. Connecticut does have very good pizza. <laughs> well, Alex, thanks again. Uh, enjoy Chicago. Uh, good luck this week. Uh, another good one against Marquette. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk soon enough. Definitely. Thank you once again.